you're very welcome. This is epilogue part two of my recent trip to the Iberian Peninsula. You can find a link to part one here. It should be there right now. It's a little white strip at the top here. And if you missed it, then I'll put the link below as well. Not only to the epilogue, but also to the episodes of the pilgrimage itself. I believe this will be the last of the epilogues pertaining to that trip, just because it's taking ages to put these videos together and there's so much more that I want to say. Especially how mindfulness is integrated into my teaching practice and if you want to work with me then please find me, I'll put links below. And so in this episode I'll be speaking only about Fatima and Obidus. These are the two places I stopped at on my way from Coimbra to Lisbon. So I do want to spend a little bit more time here because uh, Fatima is a place that my father asked me to go to. It's where my parents went on their honeymoon and it, it, seemed, it seemed to have this kind of uh, sort of em emotional um, charge for me. And, and so I knew that I'd be spending at least a couple of hours checking it out and seeing what it was all about. I did a little bit of research before going and so what I found out was that um, three little shepherds of the area saw or or had a well yes there there was a there was an apparition from the so the virgin uh, appeared and spoke with them and apparently not just once but many times and asked them to make sure that um, a place of pilgrimage was built in that area or in that place which happened um, I also knew that of the three children, um, the boy, it was two girls and, and a boy, the, the eldest girl was called Lucia. I mean, also something to note is that this isn't that long ago. We're talking um, kind of, uh, so uh, w World War I actually, but w 1917 is, is just over a hundred years ago, which is not that long ago. So yes, Fatima. I, I was quite moved by the place, obviously, because like I say, I, I already arrived with some predisposition, knowing that, that my mother had been uh, moved by this place and that my father nowadays remembers it because I'm sure that my parents went to many places together in in their honeymoon but the one that the place that he told me to go to if I could uh, because I told him that I'd be going to to Portugal was was Fatima he said you must go there okay so so I did what can I say about it it's quite it's quite amazing Visually, you, the, the, the church is, is very white and it's very simple. Uh, and then the grounds are huge. I mean, I've never seen such a place. And you can see the graves of the three, of the three original, originally three children. The, the boy died when, shortly after the first apparition. Um, he was about, I think he was 10. And then the other little girl died shortly after. And they died of common sicknesses at the time, which, you know, is really scary. And then uh, Lucia, the eldest girl, is the one who lived the longest. She, she passed away, I don't know, perhaps not that long ago. <laughs> and she became a nun and she lived in the area, you know, the, the rest of her life. She was dedicated to 
um, that that place. So I I just don't want it to come across like I'm a religious person because it isn't it isn't religion. You know, I I, I my my approach to Fatima was more you know psychoanalytical if you want to call it that it was quite uh union in in the sense that i could see the the collective unconscious of of myself as well as everybody else you know it's it's so symbolic and these things you know run run quite deep so you can't really pinpoint and say why is this so so moving because it, it isn't something that we can um, you know put into words that that easily but it, it it did strike these kind of archetypal chords in me these um, universal myths if you want to call it that way and in in a way it was a little bit eerie but at the same time awe-inspiring and uh, I didn't really know what was going on I kind of walked around and and then I, ca I came across this photo with these that you know it looks small in in the photo but this this word this word reconciliation is you know it was so powerful for me reconciliation and that it had been my father who sent me to that place uh, something else that that made it you know more poignant was that at the beginning of the pilgrimage on the first very first day we, as a kind of warm-up war activity the the guides said okay well what we're going to do is we're going to uh, hand out a little a little bag and you're going to pop your hand in and then pick out a, a stone and then you're going to carry that stone and you can give that stone any any meaning that you want and when you're ready to release your stone then you know you can you can do that now just this act of carrying a stone and releasing it at a time and place that you find um, appropriate for you is is a very healing thing this is this is how they said it and I, I could see that this is true as some of you know I, I quite like stones and I like handling them and I like painting them and I have them lying around in the house and I know that they have energy and you know so I just like stones so I was very happy with my stone and I carried it throughout the pilgrimage but I never even though I knew I had it I just never found a place to to drop it and so uh, I continued to carry it with me when I rented the car and you know through Porto and Coimbra but when I got to Fatima I realized that that's where I needed you see I'm getting emotional just <laughs> So I knew that that's where I needed to drop the stone. And, uh, and I did. And it, it was, it was really, I, again, I'm, I, I, can't, I can't find the words, but I know that I'm telling you this after having seen this word reconciliation. So what, what I'd like to say to you is that um, it is so important to to reconcile. Now, wh when I say this, I I don't. What I don't mean is, oh, if you have a conflict with someone, then go and reconcile with them, because that's that's not what I mean. Uh, what I mean is that reconciliation is internal. 
and it's it's very deep and and so accessing the opportunity to reconcile within is is something that can only happen in a in a place of of uh, calm and and of quiet where there's su where there's sufficient conditions for a person to connect with those areas within oneself that are uh, tense or solidified or uh, creating inner turmoil. While I was in Plum Village, this was in 2014, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, it's such a strange thing. But when you go to these spiritual retreats, you think that you get there and you're fine. Right, because you get there, and in your, you're in your you're in your normal state of mind and being. But then, as time progresses, well, actually, quite quickly, you realize that you're in the frequency of the people who live there, and those people are in a different frequency, which is much softer. You immediately detect that the state of mind that you arrived in was, was uh, tough. Yes. You arrive in this place and, and that just, just cracks, it cracks open. And I, it's not that anything happens, it just, it just cracks open. And then you find yourself um, thinking things that you wouldn't, you know that you wouldn't normally think you you find yourself experiencing emotions that aren't normally here at the surface and and in that thinking and and feeling there's in the words of the teacher a a transformation and that transformation is within so it doesn't really have much to do with the conflict out there it's the conflict within and then I'm not saying that the conflict within is you know sorted it's not it's not resolved but it's it's softened it's it's approachable it's it's more visible and it isn't as scary So, yes, it was, it was really something to go to Fatima. I'm, I'm really glad I went. It, you know, it was, it was like entering a kind of a, a, a matrix, if, if I can call it that, because as, so, as soon as I was in my car and I drove away from, from the church or the area, into the the Fatima town and kind of back into real life it felt it felt a little bit strange like what was that that was that was weird um but but I'm very very happy I did that perhaps also this this that I'm going to play now will will get you into you know this is how it was Santa Maria, Mãe de Deus, rogai por nós, pecadores, agora e na hora da nossa morte. Amém. Santa Maria, Mãe de Deus, rogai por nós, pecadores, agora e na hora da nossa morte. Amém. Como era no princípio, agora e é sempre. Amém.
And then at another point, and there was this. And these things are so evocative, you know, they, they really, they don't, they don't just reach you here, they kind of reverberate all, all the way. And, and so, yes, Fatima was something. And then, got, got into the car and drove myself to this little town called Obidus, which is enclosed in this uh, medieval kind of wall, not kind of, but a wall. And it was the perfect ending to uh, a, an unforgettable day. I, I was able to park the car very close to a tiny little entrance and then kind of boop, I was back in another matrix, like two matrixes in one day, uh, walked around, had a chocolate ice cream, thanks Carolina, uh, a, a great lunch, spoke to, spoke to a guy in there who was in a shop, I asked him if anybody lived there and I actually did understand his Portuguese when he said that there are 60 people who live there including himself but that in reality it's more of a tourist town and you know people come and go but there are still 60 people at least I think that's what he said who live in Obidus and it was uh, really really lovely the following day in the morning once i was settled into the lisbon flat which was amazing right downtown in a, then i explored the streets breakfast in lisbon Yay. i can't believe everything i've done well i can because i've done it it's great to hear all these languages. I love the grit of Lisbon. It's awesome. Now having breakfast and catching the tram. And then, you know, just winding down these last few days, I then uh, got, on, got into the car and drove to Madrid for three nights, stopping at Toledo. There are a couple of bits and bobs that I might integrate into a, a subsequent video, but I think we're going to leave it here as far as the pilgrimage Camino del Norte adventure is concerned. And see you soon with a new set of videos. Bye!